Luke chapter 21 verse 38 says, early in the morning all of them came to Jesus. So it is always important we come to Jesus. The life is in him. Eternal life is in him. There is no life that is not in him. Jesus is not what people say. He's not just a rabbi. He's not just a prophet. He's not just a teacher. Jesus is the Lord. He is the Savior. He is God. Jesus is the only way. He is the way, the truth, and the life. There is no substitute, no alternative to Jesus. But you see, the devil will tell people there is a lot of other ways to God. That is what is called lawlessness. That is what drove the devil out of heaven. Ezekiel chapter 28, verse 15. Iniquity was found in him. That iniquity is ammonia, is lawlessness. That is going out of the streamlined thing of God. The, the, the Bible said, Matthew 6, 33, Seek you first the kingdom of God and its righteousness. And the devil is saying, you can be holy without going through the righteousness of God in Christ Jesus. The devil is saying, there are many ways you can become God and let go of what they call Jesus. So that is the issue. They came to him, number one. Number two, to hear him. If you come to him, you are born again and you are not hungry and thirsty for the water of life. Wow, then there is trouble. There is trouble. Ezekiel chapter 31 says something very, very wonderful. He said, the waters made them great and the deep of the waters and the deep of the waters made them very great. So the water of life makes you great. So you must get that clear. We need always to come and drink from him, to hear him, so that the voice of the strangers will not derail us. I pray today, you will not be derailed by the voice of the stranger. Psalm chapter 119 verse 18 says, Open thou my eyes, O God, that I might see great and wondrous things out of thy law. I want you to pray that prayer to do, Lord, open my eyes. I want to see great and wondrous things out of your law. I want to know you, O Lord. Lord, open my eyes. I want to see you. Open my eyes, O Lord. I want to see you. I want you to pray that prayer. Open my eyes. I want to see you. Rika Shapuri Gradeya Bakoso to Bakataria. Rigete Poko Shotu Prikite Mahantu. I pray for you today. Every darkness around you, I command them to disappear in the matchless and most powerful name of Jesus. I command every form of stagnation, every form of limitation, every form of frustration that is pulling you down now. I command them to clear away from you in the name of Jesus. And any power anywhere assigned to hijack your breakthroughs, I command them to vomit your breakthroughs and disappear in the matchless name of Jesus. And any power anywhere that is cutting holes in your pocket, I command them to clear away. And I command every hole that is cut in your pocket to be healed. In the name of Jesus, for Jeremiah chapter 30 verse 17 says, I will restore your health. I will heal you of your wounds. I'm praying for you today that every of your stolen goods I recover them from the warehouse of darkness and any door that have refused to open unto you, good doors, I command them to open now in the name of Jesus and every giant opposing your breakthroughs, I command them to let you go and clear away from you and I command your breakthroughs to locate you in the name of Jesus. I pray for you today every bad news programmed or that will ever be programmed against your life i cancel them by the power in the blood of jesus and every root of your problem the source of your problems i command them to dry up now in the name of jesus and any power anywhere locking up your glory i command them to dry up now in the name of jesus i pray for you today that any power anywhere assigned to put you on the sick bed I command them to fall down and die in the name of Jesus. And every arrow of satanic judgment fired against you, that will ever be fired against you, I command them to backfire in the name of Jesus. And every evil port, 
every cordrum of poverty, every cordrum of sickness, every cordrum of shame, every cordrum of rejection and disappointments, speaking against your bloodline. I command them to scatter and die. In the name of Jesus, your enemy shall die in your place. In the matchless name of Jesus, and any power blocking the release of your blessings, I command them to scatter and die in the name of Jesus, and every bewitchment that came into your life through the use of your photographs. I command the bewitchments to clear away in the name of Jesus. I pray for you today. Causes that transfers blessing. Oh, rigada, brobobo, shekete, tekete, brababaderia. Every kosh, I see that now that has been transferring your blessings away from you. I command them to scatter and die in the name of Jesus. And any power behind the headaches and memory failure that you have been having, I command the power to dry up today in the name of Jesus. And all eaters of flesh and drinkers of blood in your body, I command them to jump out now from their roots and die in the name of Jesus. Every growth in your body, evil growth in your body i command them to dry up and die now in the name of jesus wicked arrows targeted at you i command them to change their direction and go back to descend us in the name of jesus and every spiritual poison in your head i command them to jump out now in the name of jesus for Psalm chapter 18, verses 45 and 45, says, As soon as they hear my voice, strangers shall come out of their hiding places and they shall fade away. I command every stranger in the garden of your destiny to clear away, and every strange rain assigned to fall upon your head. I command such to dry up in the name of Jesus, and every evil cloud assigned to bring wicked rain upon your head. I command them to disperse now, clear away in the name of Jesus. And I pray today that my God shall arise by thunder, and then any power that is standing before you, they shall part like the Red Sea parted for Moses and Israelites in the name of Jesus. And any evil bed conveying messages of evil about you and your family, I command them to fall down and die in the name of Jesus, finger of the wicked in your belly button. I command them to be roasted now and jump out of you in the name of Jesus. And I decree by the blood of Jesus, no weapon formed or fashioned against you that shall prosper. And every altar signed to trouble you, I command them to scatter and die. And I'm praying today, every padlock of darkness associated with your life, I command them to break and die in the name of Jesus. And I'm praying for you today. Beginning from today, you shall know what the speed of God is. For I release the speed of God upon you. Divine acceleration is your portion. Every snail anointing, every tortoise anointing that is slowing down your pace in life, I command them to dry up. Every oil of poverty, oil of stagnation, oil of rejection, oil of dissipation, oil of frustration, oil of disappointments upon your head, I command them to dry up in the matchless name of Jesus. I soak you in the precious blood of the lamb and i decree beginning from now you shall know what the peace of god is rest run about is your portion in the matchless and most powerful name of jesus beloved this is the second part of the mystery of intercession intercession kills greed in your life it kills selfishness in your life. It makes you to be in tandem with God because God is always looking for a man to stand in the gap. He said in Ezekiel chapter 22 verse 30, he said, I sought for a man to stand as a hedge on the wall, to stand in the gap between me and the land so that I will not destroy it. To reconcile the land with me in other words when you enter the ministry of intercession you have entered the real ministry of reconciliation which is what we are here on earth for second corinthians chapter 5 from verse 17 to verse 20 talks about the ministry of 
reconciliation that when we are born again we receive the word of reconciliation the ministry of reconciliation and when we get into it we become ambassadors of christ in other words god is looking for a man to stand in the gap and one of the first places is in our heart in our heart to stand in our heart and in our prayers for people that's why the bible talking about elijah he said Look at in that Ezekiel chapter 22, verse 30. God said, I found none. Then I destroyed the land in verse 31. So a lot of destructions are coming on planet Earth and in people's lives because nobody to stand in the gap. You see the prostitute, you see the armed robber, you're hearing about kidnappers, you are saying condemn them. Why not pray for them that the light of the glorious gospel shall shine upon them, that they will live and forsake their wicked ways and turn unto God. Nobody will know that you are the one, but God, Matthew chapter 6 verse 6, who see it in secret will see you and reward you openly. That's what God is seeking for. Those that will stand in the ministry of intercession in james chapter 5 verse 17 talking about elijah he says this elijah is a man like you a man that's why in ezekiel chapter 22 verse 30 he said i sought for a man not an angel i sought for a man to stand in the gap so he said elias elijah is a man like you he said he stood in the gap between me and the land the children of israel were turned away from god jezebel push them away, they sold out themselves to Baal. And this thing, other people tolerated it, there were 7,000 prophets. God said there are 7,000 prophets, but all of them compromised. They, none of them could come to stand in the gap. Elijah came to stand in the gap. And the Bible says he's a man like you. He said he prayed earnestly and fervently. One translation says he prayed, that in prayer he prayed. He prayed like the prayer of Jesus in Gethsemane. Blood coming out of him. And needless to tell you in Romans chapter 8 verse 34, that is the mystery of Jesus today, the ministry. The Bible says Jesus make it intercession for us. So when you are making intercession, you are coming in tandem with Jesus. And heaven will begin to reward you. God is always looking for a man to stand in the gap so that his wrath will not be visited on people, so that people will be reconciled to him. God wants every man to be saved. He is long-suffering. So he's looking for people to begin to pluck out people from the jaws of the enemy. It starts with your prayers, spiritual investment. Galatians chapter 6 verse 7. It says, be not deceived, God is not more. For what saved by man so it, that shall he also reap. He said, you sow to the flesh, you reap corruption. But you sow to the spirit. Out of the spirit, you reap eternal values, eternal blessings, everlasting blessings. That's the way it works. So prayer is a spiritual force that handicaps the forces holding people down. And God is looking for you to do that. Because that's why we're on planet X. So Elijah looked at this. He said, this is not God. My God is being ridiculed here. He prayed. Took the key of heaven. No rain for three and a half years. And then again, in First Kings chapter 18, he prayed again. Rain came. And then, one man riot walk squad turned the whole Turn the whole nation to God through the ministry of intercession, standing in the gap with God, reconciling men with God, nation with God. Through your prayers, you can reconcile communities, families, marriages, homes, nations, cities, councils, states to God. Just from the confines of your home, you can come in tandem with God. In Mark chapter 3, verse 3, can two work together, except they be agreed. So when you agree with God, you can change the paradigm anytime. Great ministry. So you must understand this. God is looking for the man to stand in the gap. And look at the reward for Elijah. Number one, he did not see death. Number two, God sent heavenly chariots and fire to carry him 
One, it has never happened. Ministry of Intercession has rewards. Carried him to heaven. He went to heaven not as dead. He went to heaven in this body, but glorified flesh. And today, Elijah is still relevant, even more than the living. Why? We are still talking about him. Two, the Bible is still talking about him. Three, he was among those that appeared at the Mount of Transfiguration for Jesus. So the rewards are eternal rewards. I pray today you enter into this ministry and mystery of intercession, standing in the gap. There are a lot of things happening on planet Earth. There is the pandemic. Instead of condemning people, there is therefore no condemnation. Romans chapter 8 verse 1. Instead of condemning, pray. The Bible says in Colossians chapter 4 verse 12, He said your brother, Epaphras, He said he is laboring fervently in prayers for you. For you. For you to stand perfect complete in doing the will of God. So he's driving his praying for you so that the grace will be multiplied for you to stand right with God. Minister of intercession and God, we are still talking about Epaphras today. In Galatians chapter 4 verse 19, talking about Paul. Paul said, my little children whom I travel, labor in faith in prayers that Christ be formed in you. So you win people on your knees before you win talking. You must prevail before God before you prevail before men. That's what the angel said to the young man Jacob. He said, now you are prevailed with God, you can prevail with men. Your soul winning, winning, your soul winning will become effective when you win them on your knees. I listened to Billy Graham before he died. I was privileged to be in his house to enter his uh, prayer chamber and all that to receive great impartation from that man. He said, there is no one so that I won outside through the Holy Spirit that I didn't win on my knees first. He said, I may not talk about prayers and warfare because it's not my ministry but I win souls on my knees. Minister of intercession, very glorious one, brings you in tandem with God. And then, what is the reward for Paul? For the travails he had done. Acts chapter 14 verse 1. Look at it. They said the gods have come to us in the likeness of man. That is, Paul was seen as a god. Acts chapter 28 verse 6 and verse 7. He said they changed their mind and they said this is a god. Since he didn't die like others, why would he die? He was a witness for God. He was standing in the gap. He was standing in the gap spiritually for others. When you begin to be in tandem with God, God will keep you safe. Because you are now his true witness. You see that selfishness will go. When you pray for yourself, God answers. Jeremiah chapter 33 verse 3. Call upon me and I will answer you and show you great and mighty things. God can even over answer you, Ephesians chapter 3, verse 20. But all the same, when you pray for others, Matthew chapter 6, verse 6, God rewards you plenty. So, beloved, I want you to understand this. I want to employ you, you enter the ministry of intercession today and see how my God will bless and strengthen you. Because ministry of intercession is great service unto God and humanity. The Bible talking about uh, Anna, prophetess Anna. Oh, in Luke, the Bible says something great about this woman in Luke chapter 2, verse 36. This woman was a widow. She was married and stayed with the husband only for seven years. The husband died. Instead of complaining and murmuring, why should he die? We are all uh, in God. No, the Bible says even at this time she was 84 years. She didn't go into murmuring and complaining. The Bible says he served the Lord daily in the temple. You tell him there's something about the house of God. There is goodness in the house of God that when you identify with what is happening in his house, in his temple, God begins to decorate you. Most people don't understand this. There is no lone ranger in the Sussex street. We are all products of help. May you be God's hand to another. 
That is the way it works. He said, when I was in prison, you visited me. When I was hungry, you gave me food. When I was thirsty, you gave me water, blah, 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 blah. He said, when did we do, do that? He said, as you did to one of those, you have done it to me. Ephesians chapter 6, verse 8. He said, whatever good you do to someone else, he said, the same shall God do unto you. So when you see people going through anything that is ungodly, stand in the gap and reconcile them to God. Pray for them that they will leave their wicked ways and turn to God. God will, because of you, turn his wrath against them, and then they will be reconciled to God. And you will now be decorated by God. That's what the ministry of intercession is. Stop gossiping about the things that are not working. Stop, stop complaining and murmuring about the things that are not working. First Corinthians chapter 10, verse 10. See, if you do that, the devourer will come to you. So why must you do that? Why not pray? Stop worrying. Why not pray? Stop worrying. Why not pray? Don't give up. Why not pray? Don't give up on people. Don't write people off. Pray for them. That is the ministry of intercession. And as you do same, God will begin to reward you mightily. Beloved, I welcome you to the ministry of intercession. It has great rewards for now and for eternity. It has. It has. Look out for ways to do good. Galatians chapter 6 verse 10. That's what the Bible says. It's even unto those in the household of faith. Because God is a rewarder of them who diligently seek him. Who diligently serve him. Hebrews chapter 11 verse 6. And God is not unrighteous to reward your labor of love in him. Hebrews chapter 6 verse 10. So intercession is laboring with God to reconcile men to him, to reconcile nations to him, to reconcile families to him, to reconcile marriages to him, to reconcile children to him. Stop complaining about the children. Pray for them. Intercession. Beloved, I pray today that you sign into this great thing from God, which is called Ministry of Intercession or the Mystery of Intercession. Reconciling men, the land and things to God. Remember, it is loving God. It is loving people. It is touching lives positively. And it is serving our God. I am Fresh Fire. We are missionaries on assignment to connect the world with his love and his presence. Thank you. Are you worshipping with us for the first time? Congratulations! You are most welcome into this great gathering. This is no coincidence. We believe that your steps were ordered by God and He has a plan for you. You are now a candidate of God's revival. We are a generation called to worship the one true God. We do this in spirit and in truth, in kindness and in love, preaching and teaching the word of God by the power of the Holy Spirit. Here, your mind will be renewed as we connect you to God's presence and you are now transformed into a giant of a strange order. Welcome home.